Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Larry. How are you today? Doing pretty good. Good. You guys coming in or what? Talk to me, your puppies. What are you guys doing? Got your helpers? Yeah. Wait, background. Yeah, you can't see them because of the background. I don't know if I can see them. My cat's sitting right next to me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hi, Stormy. Morning, Robin. I was just getting ready to text you good morning. <laughs> good morning. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing good. 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 Are you at home right now? Yes, I'm working from home. Cool. I just saw your cat. What's your cat's name? That's Dolly. Okay. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> she well, keeps me company. Yeah, good. That's good. Good morning, Hello, Dan. Yeah. What's up, guys? Happy Purple Shirt Tuesday, everyone. Happy Purple Shirt. Looks good on you guys. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Nicole. Hi, Sadie. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. Good morning. All right, how's everyone's Monday? Twas it fantastically beautiful? That was yesterday, right? <laughs> it yeah. was. It was beautiful. Hi, Mac. The king. Yeah, Mac and Kitty. Yeah. All right. Ours was good. We made a bunch of calls. Mac. And we were on that Mac. training for MLS 101. So that was good. I learned some things. Mac. Cool. Awesome. Well, let's get let's get moving in our day. It is Tuesday, it is 801, which means we have time for you to become a better agent. Morning, Stormy. Good morning. What kind of awesomeness do we have to cover this morning? Did y'all remember yesterday's quick script on how to say no politely? I appreciate you asking, but no. But no. <laughs> or you said, I'd love to say yes, but no. I wish I could say yes. <laughs> I wish I could say yes. I want you to protect your pers your professional fee as best you can, right? It's all it's all about you guys making and keeping money. Did anybody use that technique yesterday? Try a no on anything? Thank God I didn't have to. <laughs> Everyone just said yes to Stormy. He had a good day. <laughs> All right, where do you need help with, Mara? Good morning. Hey, I'm actually gonna show, you guys are gonna think this is dumb. I've been doing real estate for five years. Um, I've never ended up representing both sides. I've tried once and it didn't work out and not my fault. <laughs> um, so today I am, I'm showing a listing of mine to a buyer that called on another sign call of mine, so. She wants me to represent both. I know you guys think this is no big deal, but I'm just trying to think of how to be like oh, I think super it's objective for both sides. <laughs> because of course I had the listing first and she's been working so hard to get her little house ready and she's going to be so accommodating. And anyway, I just thought I'd throw it out there, you know, as a thing so we are. The best way to do that, Miss Mora, is stay as neutral as you possibly can. Right. 
you can represent both sides. We just cannot give anything away that would harm the negotiating position of either clients. Well, that's why I asked her this morning. I know she wanted to give, for example, like a carpet allowance. I'm like, okay, exactly how much did you want to give? And what exactly do you want me to tell her will be done before closing? Um, because she wasn't really ready to go live with this. Um, but she's really anxious to get out of town. So she's like, yes, you can show this one person. Speaking of which, am I going to get in trouble for that? Because I have a like an exempt delay. I can show it to someone ahead of time. Oh, yeah. You can even accept a contract on it if you want. Okay. The, the, the issue happens is you need to, if you do accept the offer, make it live in the system and then active contingent in the same day. Okay. Yeah. We see people do that quite a bit recently. Okay. Huh? <laughs> because you're, when you're looking, you're like, hey, I never even thought of how this already under <laughs> oh, no. so. I heard a hey, Dan. Or is that yeah, just my hey, brain? Dan, um, aren't, in my experience, dual agencies are easier, man. I mean, especially if you have like a buyer and seller that want the same thing and you're not dealing with another realtor's personality. Uh, it's just like, man, like all you really do is leave it up to the buyer and seller. In my opinion, I think they're easier. Well, my other one fell out because my buyers were completely unreasonable in their bins or they were all asked for all kinds of crazy stuff, like rebuilding a deck that had been there for 20 years because they didn't like the spacing of the floor and stuff like that. So yeah. And that they, happens out that happens outside of a dual agency, right? And yeah, then you have exactly. another realtor to deal with on top of it. Right. So I, that's so, what I'm saying. Yeah. I wouldn't psych yourself out if I was you, Mara. You're yeah, good. I know. It's just um, but I recently this has just been such a powerful lesson to me wow. that not all offers or buyers are gonna be the same or reasonable. And so I really started counseling my sellers. So let's wait, you know, because we do have multiple offers on almost everything right now. Let's, you know, talk to all of them because there can be nuances. Like the other listing I just had, we had one guy go, oh yeah, my people are really handy and they can do, you know, you know, fixing themselves. And the other one was just leaving the, and the viewing was like, oh, well, we're going to want them to fix this and this and this. And I was like, okay, this is already really two different personalities. So it's really important to talk to those people, I think, with those offers coming in. And because my guy, I was real clear. I said, he can't afford to fix much more. We need a really reasonable Benzer. And, and thankfully, that's really worked out well with the people we chose. Even though initially their, their price wasn't as high as the other one, we gave them an opportunity to kind of try to match it. So just. Anyone else had an unrealistic buyer or seller lately? <laughs> a lot. No, no one? Just all been super swimming and easy? Yeah, you lies. We had one. Uh, well, it wasn't ours. Well, we had a listing and um, and the very same day we got an offer and it was cash and it was nice and high above. Um, but then during that binzer, then the buyer said she wanted something else. But anyways, I think Lynn Mara's gonna do great. And um, like, I agree with Stormy that um, she shouldn't psych herself out and that she should, um, it could be easier. But then also Mara, like this could just be your opportunity to become a wonderful, wonderful realtor because you have to like be super, you know, like, yeah. I don't know what the word is, but like, you gotta use your I computer. Know, like, yeah, you just gotta, gotta use your computer. I can yeah. hear myself on echo somewhere. Anyways, I can hear myself I'm not saying anything somewhere. good anyway. anyway. <laughs> so that's well, all, Teresa. you're gonna do good. Awesome. Everyone's just kind of like just staring at the screen like, what am I going to say or not? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Yo, wicked bad echo somewhere. Echo somewhere. On me? Probably. Yep. Yep. Got a delay? That's on your side, Teresa. Well, let's continue on with some scripting. We have focused a lot lately on objections and I think that's key for you to get moving forward in your careers. We kind of ended on seller objections and stuff like that. What use have you put those to yet? Does that make any sense? Has anyone used any of the objection handlers that we were talking about last week? Where do you feel like you need some help with objections? Give me an objection you keep 
running into that you would like a more ninja style response to? I have one. What do you got, Sadie? I feel like lately I've been losing buyers and sellers because they say that they want someone with more experience. Okay. Who else has ever had this happen? Yeah, for like ever since I got my license to today. Okay, let's go through it. How we handle it? Oh, I use the same thing, same stuff over and over. And that is, is that um, I have over a hundred years of experience because my broker has X amount of years. The person I work with, my life coach has X amount of years. My business coach has X amount of years. And, and you add all that up. And I say that that's my experience. I like and it. And then to tag on to that, when they when like when they say, well, there's all these other agents that I could choose from, and what's the difference between you and them? And then say to you, say, I'm right in front of you here today. You keep at they keep asking you questions, and you keep you're able to play the game with them or whatever. Like that's a pickleball reference, but anyways, um, you know, you are matched up at that point. Like there's a bunch of other people, but you know, you're you have that privilege. Right. Why would I choose you? You don't have that much experience. Well, because I'm standing in front of you. I have beat 7,000 other agents to stand in front of you and talk to you. And it just shows my willingness to earn your business. Well, I want an agent with more experience. That's fantastic. How much experience do you need? You know, what does that mean to you? Well, I have the support of my team lead who's been in the business for what, 30 years? You know? I, yes, and I've, I've said that. <laughs> Yeah, extremely high end luxury. You're not just getting me as your representative, you're getting my entire team. I'm just the voice in front of you right now. When it comes to negotiating, when it comes to follow through in the process, when it comes to your team, we have extensive relationships with not only the lenders, but every third party aggregate that's going to be a part of this transaction that's going to exceed your expectations and get you where you need to go. Yes, I. It's the confidence backing it when you're saying, when you're able to say, it's not just me, you're not hiring me. You're hiring my entire team. And what would you rather work with, Mr. or Mrs. Client? One person or an army? You'll have a single point of contact so the communication is seamless and easy, but you've got the backing of thousands of years of experience combined. And that's Keller Williams, baby. I love that. Thank you. I had, I had a 7 a.m. phone call this morning from a client, an agent, sorry, an agent, my client, where a broker at a different company was challenging her on a response for a Benzer request. She called me up and I reiterated what we already talked about and gave her the confidence to go back after it. And she even said, it's like, it's so nice to know that I have the support here. Keller Williams wasn't about the money. It was about the support because I know that if something's on fire or if I'm falling, I've got somebody there to pick me up and help me up. And then she laughed and she said, I, I love the fact that I'm a new agent and I know more than this broker does. So just because they've been in the business for a while does not mean they know what they're doing. Years of experience don't mean shit. Has somebody had a 30 year career or 31 year careers? All right, next, anyone else have that? I'm in, you know, I want an agent with a little bit more experience. I know that that is a stopping point for a lot of new agents because they fear lock themselves into thinking they are not capable of servicing the needs of this client. How do we handle it? Well, down the same road, um, when I ran into that in my first year, um, again, it went, I had, we'd had this discussion. And while it's basically the same language or the same concept, um, I was able to turn, to turn the conversation to a positive by simply saying, you know, yes, I'm relatively new, but Keller Williams is comprised of 300, at the time, 300 agents. And I have a broker that's 30 years experienced. 
you take 300 agents and all the years that they've been in the business, you see Kia Keller Williams, all of us are a team. You know, all, we're, we're not agents working individually. We all work together as a group. And therefore I have got all the experience you can imagine with anything that I run into that might become a problem that I'm not immediately ready to handle. I've got the backing to do it. And that's, I kind of reeled that off very confidently right back at the people that are there like, Oh, okay. I also like one, uh, some other guy shared with us when he was brand new and a guy, he was going to get like a really high end listing and he was like, Hey, I am going to have all of my time just to focus on you. You're going to be my only client. I'm going to be there to service you. You know, 24, I'll hold an open house every single day, that sort of thing. So I thought that was kind of an interesting twist on, hey, I'm new, but I can give you my full attention. So let me show you how great a job I can do for you kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good one. You're basically just saying that you're ready to out hustle the next more experienced agent. So, and you can show that by your actions, meet them at an open house and be like, oh, you're not experienced enough. But like, all right, well, I'm licensed. Let me take you to see a house. I don't know. People like hustle and grind. Everyone, most people. Hard work beats talent because talent don't work hard. All right, Miss Sadie, I want to hear it. You know, Sadie, I appreciate you coming out here today. I just, I don't know. I think I'm going to want an agent with a little bit more experience. You are on the spot. Well, Dan, I understand, um, but I have a team leader with over 20 years of experience and I'm with the best brokerage in Tucson with 400 plus agents and a great team um, that can be there for you at, at any given time. Okay, well, I thought I was hiring you. Well, I'm going to put in all the work, but if there's anything that you ever need and I'm not available, I've got a great team behind me that will be there for you. Okay. You feel a little bit more confident now? Yes, thank you. I want you to work on that every day. Talk to yourself, do it in the car until you can say it seamlessly and it just becomes an automated response. Mr. And Mr. Klein, I, Mr. And Mrs. Klein, I completely understand. I appreciate you would want an agent with more experience and knowledge. When you hire me, it's not just hiring one agent. My team lead has over 20 years experience, both locally and abroad, tons of resources at a market center, Keller Williams, Southern Arizona is the best brokerage in Tucson. Keller Williams is the best brokerage in the, in the world. You have the backing of the greatest minds in real estate to get you where you need to go. I would never, I don't put the thing in there, but I'm not available. I've got people that I like to leave that out. I just like leave the team aspect as the loom. It's not just me. It's the backing of the greatest real estate minds in the world. Awesome. How can you say no to that? Right. Um, so now my question is, what if they're interviewing another Keller Williams agent? Fantastic. I'm glad that you're interviewing a second Keller Williams agent. That's a great second choice. Let me show you why my, my, myself and my team should be your first. That was awesome. That's a great second choice. Let me show you why I should be first. Yeah. <laughs> then you go, Mr. And Mrs. Buyer, my name is Sadie Daly, and I'm going to work for you daily to get your deals done. <laughs> Just because I'm new, which means that I get to focus all of my energy on servicing your needs at a high level. Well, who are you interviewing? Danny Roth. I'm glad you're interviewing Danny Roth. He's a great second choice. Let me show you why myself and my team should be number one. That's a good comparison. <laughs> right. That's, that's standing against Titans. And I'll do it. I've, I've actually done it. He's like, oh, I know Danny Roth. He sold me my house. Yeah, Danny Roth's a great agent. He's a great second choice for you. Let me show you why I should be number one. The guy chuckled and laughed and said, okay, Dan. And I got the appointment. Don't ask if I got the sale. I'm still working on it, but I got the appointment. 
I was actually, gonna say I got the appointment too, but <laughs> I've, I've actually you know, re done reverse psychology a couple of times, and I you know I hate doing it because it's somewhat negative. But when you're in front of the client, it's uh, it's with the client directly, and I've done it. You know, hey, yeah, great. Danny Roth and his team are huge. They do a lot of business in town. It's a great second choice. But let me uh, explain this. That's a team. I'm one individual agent, and I'm able to focus 100% on you. I will be with you from the beginning to the end, every step of the way. You won't be getting calls from six different people saying, you know, uh, you know, some random third person, fourth person, fifth person you've talked to, and therefore. I'm available to you at any time. I've answered the phone at 2.15 in the morning when my client was in Taiwan and needed something immediately. So I am, you know, I will be your point of contact for everything. So you have one person to deal with, not five, six, seven different people that are in different positions on these big teams. And I'm here for you anytime that you need anything or have any questions whatsoever. And I have people at that caliber that I can refer reference or ask questions to if there's something that I need some assistance on. I'm here for you and that's my main goal. I like it. Hey, something similar. That's good, Larry, and, and not get lost in the shuffle among a lot of people and yeah, be their primary contact. I think that's good. That's good, and you can still tie in, even though I'm the anchor, I have, you know, a support team behind me. So, yeah, that's awesome, Larry. Does anyone know about our new office? The one on Oracle? Do I switch this? That's the new office on Oracle. I didn't know there was a new office on Oracle. It's very pretty. Someone needs to turn the lights on, no? Oh. So my next yeah. question is I got going on to your competitive competing against another agent, you know, what happens when somebody asks, Well, how much would you cost as far as percentage of commission? That's a good follow up <clears throat> to the question that the listing agent or the listing person, Mr. Mr. Lister, he's gonna ask that question. Well, if I hire you, will you do less? Will you, you know, do, I don't know, 5% versus 6%? That's a good follow-up question. Hit her, Stormy. Hit her with I, it. I appreciate you asking, but no. <laughs> Can I try? And here's why. Go ahead. Go ahead. I appreciate you asking, and I wish I could say yes. Here's why. And here's why. Well, the other agent said they do it for 5%. Do you know what that 5% gets you? Because I'll tell you what my 6% gets you. Okay, okay. Someone else. The other agent said they do it for 5%. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Client, if that agent is willing to go 5% on his own commission, when it comes down to negotiating the sale price of your home, when do you, how, fact, how quickly do you think that agent's going to fold? If he's willing to give up his own money, what is he going to give up out of your pocket? Wow, that was perfect. That's a good one. That was amazing. That's what I was looking for. All right, someone get, somebody give me that one. You know, the other agent, here's, here's another twist. Another agent said they do it only for 2%. Why would I pay you six? I was going to go, but somebody else. All right. Well, I'll Mr. Go. Mrs. Teller, I completely understand you'd ask that question. And 2% does seem like it's a whole lot better for you than 6%. But let me tell you, the listing agent is still going to get the 3% for the buyer side which means that he's only going to collect 2% for his side, making it a 5% total. And then be going to Larry's thing. And if he's so quick to discount his own pay, how do you feel confident in him being able to negotiate your best financial interests? Right. right. I just got a lot of head nods on that one, right? 
Do you feel like you could say it? Let's say it together. If that agent is willing to reduce their commission so easily, what makes you feel confident that they'll be able to look after your best financial interests? Or you can say, what makes you think that they're going to be able to fight for you in the negotiations? Hey, Dan, would you be, would, what if you said something like, hey, well, check this out. Normally I charge 8%, but today I'm going to charge you 6 <laughs> People would do you that. Reduce, you would are you saving. Would you do reduce your commission? You know what? Typically, I, I would say no, but in this situation, because you're such a good friend, good client, good neighbor, good community person, I like your mail, your mailbox. I'll do it for six and a half percent. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What do you mean six and a half? The other guy's charging six. Well, that's what I'm telling you. My my normal fee is eight, but for you, because of our relationship, I'm willing to do six and a half percent. And then just sit there. <laughs> you guys ever heard of a silent close? No, I have not. Explain. It's when you go for the close and then you stay silent. Amber, thank you so much for asking that. Typically, I, I would say no, but just because of our relationship, I'm willing to do your break. I'll do it for six and a half percent. Just sign right here. Awkward turtle. <laughs> Who felt awkward? Not Ray, me. Yeah. Well, Ray I don't feel awkward, but I can imagine what the the seller is like. Uh, what do I say right now? <laughs> you know why you sit? You, you you go for a close and then you go silence. Because it's on them to make a decision right there and, and there. Right there and then, and the human condition is to not be rude, and people don't like to be rude. So what they do is they follow suit, okay. Or you'll get a, an objection flushed out, and you can work past it. If you were to say, hey, you know, I, I appreciate you, you know, you, you asking, but no. I usually don't reduce my commission. It's, you know, I work hard for it. My clients do this, and, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it, and the marketing, and everything your value just keeps dropping with every when you're able to come confidently and say you know i i, I appreciate you asking but no please sign right here don't i feel more resolute more confident more like ironclad in my decision It is a yeah. difficult skill to learn to ask for the sale and then stay quiet. You're creating a social awkwardness and humans like, again, don't want to be rude. So they don't want to have that social awkwardness. Yeah. Dan, you helped me so much because that was one of my big things was, you know, trying at a buyer consultation, you know, it was like dancing around everything. And, you know, the very last thing, oh, you know, the signing the, the buyer broker contract, you know, I was terrified. And now it's just like, okay, well, this is everything, you know, well, you ready to hire me now? <laughs> and it's so easy. And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. So I was you able to overcome because of you. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> I, I get, I, I will take that to one more level. Just a, a slight thing though, rather than asking the question, are you ready to hire me now? Maybe I, I turned that around on my last listing agreement and said, so what I'm hearing is that you're about, you're ready to hire me to do this job. No. So it wasn't a question they could say yes or no to. It was, you know, I'm here. What I'm hearing from what you're saying is when the other, when the, when the client was telling me how bad the other agent was, the guy that didn't get him the information that he asked for, da, 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 that, you know, and he started talking about, you know, well, what day can we put this up and all that stuff. And I said, you know, from what I'm hearing, it sounds to me like you're ready to have me do, do this job for you. And I'd like, and I'd like to do so. Um, and, and just stopped. And he sat there and he goes, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Well, Larry, every situation is going to be a little different. Yeah. yeah. 
Larry, it sounds like the, you and I working together would be a win-win situation. Would you like me to sell your house for you? Mm -hmm. Sign right here. Yeah, the last guy I was talking to was a little, little bit different because it's on the phone, a phone interview. And so uh, as we were talking, I was like, well, sounds like, you know, we're pretty comfortable and compatible. You, you know, you think we can work together and I can get started on trying to find your new, your next home. So it was just that kind of the same thing, Larry, like you're in that conversation. So you, then you can just say, Hey, okay, we're ready to, ready to do this kind of thing. And so. so since we've been having these conversations on this morning call for weeks on end now and talking about all these kinds of things, did that feel good coming out of you at the time you were saying it? Oh yeah. Yeah. And where did it come from? these conversations uh, yes yes so i owe each and every one of you a big debt of gratitude so so what you're saying is therese is that your morning investment in scripts and tricks has created a better confidence and helps you make more money yes it has say it louder for those in the back yes it has <laughs> invite a friend next time bring someone with you so, and a, few, where you, and, a, and a few real estate agents from other companies. Bring them. You want to you create some profit share for yourself? Just invite them to classes. Hey, I really enjoyed working together. I think you'd be a great fit for my culture. Why don't you join us in our morning scripts and tricks class? I think you'd like it. By the way, we were purple on Tuesdays. It makes them laugh. Look at all the purple shirts. I mean, Larry's is purple if you're colorblind and blind at the same time. <laughs> but remember guys it's all about confidence it's all it's not exactly what you say it's how you say it so practice 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 does not make perfect practice makes permanent so if you practice it weak you are going to make it permanently weak if you practice it confidently you practice it smoothly you practice it articulatingly articulatingly it's a new word look it up it'll it'll stick that way so the key point is repetition and consistency. You want to have these things loaded in your brain so that when somebody says, I need an agent with more experience, I appreciate you saying that when you hire me, it's not just me. I can back by my entire team. I've got a team leader, 20 years experience and a lot of luxury listings here in Tucson. I'm sure you've seen her name around as well as the backing of the best real estate minds in the business. We are the number one brokerage in Tucson. Let me show you why working with the Keller Williams agent is in your best interests. These are recorded, so please feel free to check them out online, kwca.com. And speaking of that, I've got one other tip or trick for you. If you don't really have someone that, that you can play off of, there's an app called Recorder. Turn it on, try your script, then listen to yourself. You'll know. If you've got it down to where you're comfortable or it's going to sound good going to another person or you need to work on it, you'll know by listening to yourself. I know it's scary. <laughs> First thing in radio that we did was, oh my God, it's air check time. I've got to listen to myself on the radio. Oh no, what's the program director going to say? This is yourself. I mean, you can be your own judge. Simple little app called Recorder. So, Sit down and record yourself doing that and then listen back to it. You guys are all on Zoom. You can record yourself too, so you can you can watch your facial movements, your hand movements, your smiles. Yeah, Sadie, smile, damn it! Thank you. I've been smiling this whole time. I know. I'm just pushing it out of you. And by the way, is that office up and running, Sadie? Yeah, it is. What's the address? Seventy-four hundred North Oracle Road, Suite One Thirty-One. We share it with Bay Equity Home Loans. Yeah, there's a couple of desks back there just to help. Does, does any, anybody have anything coming on the market here soon? A 4-2 um, budget is 250. So 3-2 coming up for 190. Southside. Four you know, they would, they want four bed. What's square footage, Dan? 1100 Oh, no. Minimum is 1500 for them. So, But keep that in mind if you guys have a listing coming up. I'm looking for 4-2. Max budget is 250 However, you know, maybe a three-bed with a den. But keep your – if you guys have something, let me know. I and will. What's your price I, point? 
Jason. Hmm. I said I want to get licensed. There, I'll have, I think it's a 4 2 with a pool. I think Rowdy's the 4 3, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's out in Red Rock. It's massive. It's awesome. Oh, that that's too far out. Marana is where they're cutting it off. So between Marana and uh, possibly Green Valley, but um, within if it's west, Del Sol's too far. So, um, but yeah, they're pretty much looking everywhere. It's just nothing's really set. What's on the market? They like I think the mid-century modern type, the older homes, um, but. A pool would be a plus, but that's not what they're looking for exactly. But awesome. Get out there, do something great with your lives. Enjoy your purple shirt Tuesdays. Thank you for joining us this morning. Your input is excellent. Makes the day better for me too. Good seeing your face, Miss Nicole. I miss being here. <laughs> Thanks for having you. If you guys on the PC group and you have not done so, please send me those six questions that I had sent you yesterday. Fill out the profit allocation forms. We'll start thinking about our goals for 2021. Next week, we start doing sit downs or Zoom downs. We'll talk soon. Ooh.